I was in my third year of divinity school at Duke University in North Carolina when I met the Mormons. I like to go out to karaoke and I would go out with a friend and often it was Wednesday nights right after we had our church group and so I'd be all dressed up and I'd go out to karaoke and I'd go singing and there was another group and I noticed that they were very friendly and one night my friend was not able to come with me because there was a big storm and she wanted to get home she lived further away from the restaurant so I went by myself and um, the group asked me to stay at their uh, to sit with them at their table now, there was a gentleman there who was seemed close to my age and I was kind of interested in and then there was an older couple and a few other people and um, <clears throat> I started talking to them getting to know them um, and then uh, the gentleman that I was kind of interested in kind of took an interest in me and um, one night I was sitting at a table with my friend again and the gentleman came over and uh, I, we invited him to sit with us um, and we asked him what denomination he was and he was very straightforward he said I'm a Mormon do you have a problem with that <laughs> um, and I was very honest I said I don't know I don't know very much about them I'll do some research and I'll get back to you next week and I did I did the research and praise God when I looked up Mormon on the internet of all the things that could pop up uh, mormon.org was at the top and I started doing research so the next uh, Wednesday I told him that I had done research and I didn't have a problem with him being Mormon and we started talking and we started having um, great conversations about religion and and uh, other things um, he asked me to dance basically he took my hand and dragged me onto the uh, dance floor he had a wonderful voice um, and he uh, had a horse on his jacket and um, he was handsome it was just about everything that I was looking for in a, in a man and we started we started dating um, <clears throat> at this time I was preaching at a little church in the in the sticks at every other Sunday and so I invited him to come to the church and listen to me preach and he said that he would come if I came with him to his church afterwards because his church was meeting in the afternoon and I agreed had no problem with that uh, so he came and listened to me preach and then I went to his church afterwards in the afternoon and right away I felt something different um, right away I knew there was something different about this church um, I grew up in uh, the Catholic Church um, and you don't make sounds there and if you have children there in the church that I grew up in you took them in the back if they made any noise at all and I noticed that this church was kind of rowdy um, the children they they made all kinds of noises they uh, they talked they laughed they they cried um, sometimes if they got too rowdy they took them out but mainly this was a church where children were allowed to be in the service the whole time I also noticed two other things I noticed that there was no passing of the basket or passing of the plate um, for collecting money and I noticed that there was no uh, standing up and um, saying hello to your neighbor and shaking hands during the service. Both things that um, I don't really like in a service. So I was really excited actually about the church right away, but uh, had no intention of joining. Just, you know, excited to go with him. Um, but I was at Duke Divinity School and I was going to be a church pastor at this point. So 
um, definitely was not looking into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because they did not pay their their bishops um, and so I had no future um, job at that church and so um, for a long time I, I wouldn't even meet with the missionaries and then finally um, the missionaries <laughs> called while I was um, on a date with this gentleman and uh, were asking and I guess they called him a lot to find out when I was going to meet with them because I was pretty regular at church at this point and so they definitely wanted to to meet with me and um, <clears throat> I uh, I finally agreed to meet with them I was like okay uh, you know they I guess they've been calling a lot I'll, I'll go ahead and meet with them so um, they began meeting me, with me at my place, and the first week, I will never forget, um, they met with me, and the, the gentleman that I was dating came along, and they asked me the first few questions, <clears throat> and one of the questions was, do you believe that, that God still speaks to people? Do you believe that, you know, he still, he still has messages for us? And I said, yes, absolutely. And they, they said, um, they looked at each other after they asked me these few questions. And they said something to the effect of, this is going to be an easy one. <laughs> Little did they know. Being in divinity school, I had some pretty deep theological questions for them. So after the first week, they decided um, that they would start bringing... Um, a gentleman that was from the church that was in the PhD program at Duke to answer my questions. Um, I was really impressed with them because I asked them some very deep questions in the first week and they said, you know, they said that they would check into it and they would get back to me and so many people say that and then completely forget about it. But the following week they came back with that PhD student and they answered every question that I had the week before. And that went on for weeks and then months. Um, I went through a couple different missionaries, um, never setting a date for baptism, but always um, really interested to, to hear what they had to say and, and to learn more. And um, finally, um, you know, dating was getting pretty serious. Um, and um, I was really interested in the church, but I, I was, um, I had written home um, telling them that I was looking into this new church and one of my relatives um, he wrote back this like 10 page letter on how awful the Mormons are and how they're evil and um, how they sacrificed goats in the temple and all kinds of horrible horrible things that he had probably read online and um, you know I went through it and I asked the missionaries most of the questions I had from the letters and they insisted that most of it wasn't true um, but it kind of stalled me because now my, my mom was afraid that I had joined a cult. And so, although I kept meeting with the missionaries, I had no intention of joining the church. Um, I, I graduated from Duke Divinity School. The missionaries were able to come to my, ba um, my graduation, which was really cool. Um, they, they actually received permission from the uh, missionary president and were able to come to my graduation at Duke. And um, things kept going the way they had been going. And one of my favorite miss missionaries, Elder Mapu, I will never forget him. Wonderful, wonderful guy. Um, he was leaving. He was going on to a new place. And he, he had been with me for quite some time. And he said, you are going to be baptized on July 31st. And at this point, it was June. And I was like, no way. That is way too soon. Like, no, I'm, I, at this point, I'm, I'm barely thinking of baptism and joining the church. But at the same time, I'm like, no, no way. That is not going to happen. Well, Elder Mapu was right. I was actually baptized on Jan July 31st. Um, he was not able to be there. He, he had left um, prior. So I was, <clears throat> I was baptized by a different missionary that had also been with me for quite some time, and uh, uh, Elder Templeton. I'll never forget his name because as soon as I think of the uh, rat in uh, Charlotte's Web, <laughs> poor guy, he got that a lot. <laughs>
but um, I was baptized on uh, July 31st, uh, joined the church um, a year later. Um, I was able to go to the temple, which was a really wonderful experience. They do not um, sacrifice goats in the temple, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, shortly after that, uh, my husband, my now husband, um, the guy I was dating from the church, um, we got married. So um, many years later, we had a daughter and we're sealed in the temple. and. Um, I remember I only had two questions for the bishop before I got, before I was baptized. Um, these were the most important things to me, apparently, before I was baptized into the church. I said, what am I going to do with my divinity degree? Because obviously I can't be a church pastor and be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And the other question was, can I drink herbal tea? <laughs> so he said yes to the tea, herbal tea was fine. And he said that um, I could still use my divinity degree to be a chaplain um, because chaplains don't have to be ordained. And so um, that was a good enough answer for me. As long as I could use my degree, I was happy with that. I am now a hospice chaplain, although I'm taking a break to homeschool my daughter. And uh, I'm so um, blessed to be able to do that. Really, really happy to be able to do that. So. Um, so yeah, that's how I met the Mormons at karaoke. <laughs>